Coming up, back to school, the do's and don'ts when it comes to wearing backpacks. Then we'll hit the road for a close look at the national parks across the country. There's all kinds of parks. There's historical parks, battlefields. There's every kind of park out there. Also, play ball. These young players are hitting it out of the park, all in the name of goodwill. Plus, this video has a lot of people talking what you need to know about sun bears. And hip hop turns 50. Our pal Jackson Daly catches up with hip hop legend LL Cool J to talk about a musical form that was born from a little party in the Bronx, New York. And the rest, as they say, is history. So you had guys that would, you know, talk on the mic and they would just MC, you know, mic control. And then they started, you know, rhyming and adding poetry and call and response and getting the crowd involved. And one thing led to another and you end up with DJs spinning unbelievable beats and people doing incredible dances and, and it just kind of morphed into this big culture that we know today. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt. Hope you're all having a great week. We've got a lot to share with you ahead, including our picture of the week that's causing quite a stir on the internet about what exactly it is we're seeing. And a little later on, we'll talk s'mores, and maybe eat s'mores too. So grab a glass of milk and settle in. But first, let's begin with one of the stories making news headlines. President Joe Biden visited Arizona this week, designating a new national monument near the Grand Canyon. I'm proud to use my authority under the Antiquities Act to protect one, almost one million acres of public land around Grand Canyon National Park. The new monument is in an area sacred to Native American tribes and is now protected from mining and future development because of the president's proclamation. Did you know that according to the National Park Service, national monuments are usually smaller and less developed, while national parks contain a variety of resources and take up large land and water areas? So with this in mind, we decided to hit the road to find out more about our amazing national parks. They are part of America's fabric, majestic, breathtaking, magnificent, and historic. There's all kinds of parks. There's historical parks, battlefields, there's every kind of park out there. There are more than 400 national parks covering more than 80 million acres in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and several U.S. territories. In 1916, President Woodrow Wilson signed the Organic Act, creating the National Park Service. The service is responsible for maintaining the national parks and monuments. In 1872, Yellowstone became the first national park. One of the largest, the park spreads across three states and features dramatic landscapes, plenty of wildlife, and the legendary Old Faithful Geyser, which shoots bursts of steaming water several times a day. There are other giants on the national park stage as well. The Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Glacier National Park, the Great Smoky Mountains, and Acadia, and windows into American history and the Civil Rights Movement are on display in cities like Washington, D.C. If you're looking for dinosaurs, Dinosaur National Monument is home to a large number of fossils. Also, if surfing is your thing, head to Great Sand Dunes National Park and give sand surfing a try. But there are also hidden gems that may not be too far from home. Santa Monica Mountains National Park is just an hour outside of Los Angeles. It's the largest urban national park in the country. Regardless of the park you visit, rangers say it's important to do your homework. Every park also has different rules and regulations. It's important though that um, you do learn more about the park that you're visiting so you can recreate safely. And kids, if your family is not able to make the trip to see one of these natural wonders in person, don't worry, there's a ton to see and learn online. I would encourage kids and their parents to check out um, nps.gov on the web or download the app and start exploring. So get out there and start exploring. <laughs> 
a lot of people don't realize that these are public lands and it does belong to them. It belongs to us, it belongs to all of us. Meantime, summer break is coming to an end for some kids. Students in parts of the country are heading back to school this week. Many, no doubt, toting a backpack full of everything they'll need for class. But backpacks are hardly one size fits all. And here with some backpack do's and don'ts, our good pal, Dr. John Torres, also on hand to help us with a segment is our kids correspondent, Jackson Daly, who is still on summer break? Yes, I am. Are you starting to get ready, though, worrying about things Sadly, like backpacks yes, and all I that? Am. Well, let's start off with, with Dr. John and our first question, some general advice to, to kids and adults who carry backpacks. And the main thing is, regardless of your age, you want to make sure it fits correctly, because if it doesn't fit correctly, it could cause some issues, particularly your musculoskeletal, you get muscle soreness, you could have sprains and strains, you don't want to have any of that. And Jackson, this is yours, right? Yes, this, this is, one is my use. bag. Well, let's look at the one you don't use and, and yes, see what size style, this is. <laughs> A little too small. And so you want to make sure that's going to fit correctly. It should come correctly. down further. It should come down yeah. further. It should be able to ride on the shoulders more. And this one's probably a little too narrow. So looking at yours here, this looks like a great size. Let's have you put it on. And you can see you know, it fits him pretty well. The one thing I would do is probably cinch it up a little bit more, a little bit tighter. Yeah. Looks good. We Feels should, great. Yeah, we should remember you do have to tighten it up sometimes. Right, and that's one thing. You do might have to tighten it up. The other big thing that people do all the time besides the size is they have it going too far down. They'll have it way down here and just dangling off their shoulders way down and past their hips, past their bottom here. Problem with that is that's going to make you lean over. That's going to cause some soreness because everything is on your shoulders, which you don't want it to be. You want it to be partially on your back. And like you can see in his case, it's doing great. People often forget they have these straps here. These straps are to cinch it up and to make sure that it's fitting correctly. I don't know if you have this issue. I get kind of lazy sometimes and do like the one strap. Oh yeah, the one strap, kind of two. Right? Some of it's lazy, some of it's look cool. I've had it like that before, <laughs> another one on my back. <laughs> that is, the second one everything. on your back? Yes. Okay. I can tell you, that's a, that's yeah, a don't yeah, do. Yeah, that's a don't do yeah, that. I'm guessing so, that's a yeah, don't do. They'll do that all the time, one strap versus the other strap. Problem is, these are made to be on both shoulders and have your hips take some of the weight. And yeah. if you go backpacking, you use a hip belt, to take the weight off of your shoulders specifically. And so you wanna make sure that you're distributing the weight evenly. If you do it one shoulder over the other, sprains, strains, those kinds of things. If you have one in front and one in back, yeah. or even just one in front, it's throwing you off. It's not the way it's made to be. It's not the way the backpack's pack's built. So that's gonna give you some back problems as well. So you wanna be careful with that. What, what should the weight be? So the weight on this one, how much do you weigh? 110 pounds. So 16 and a half is the maximum it should weigh. 15% of your body weight is the most it should weigh. And part of the problem is I did this. You probably did this, Lester Jackson. You might do this as well. You use the backpack as your locker because oh, you want to yes. save time. I didn't know where my locker is this year. <laughs> so, so you load all these books and everything else in the backpack, and it weighs 20, 30 pounds. And you see kids out there just struggling. Sometimes they'll be leaning over and bad posture, yeah, which can cause, yeah. right, cause some okay. muscle aches as well. And so you want to just take things home that you need, not things that you are going to want to just have for convenience, things you need that night, and make sure it doesn't weigh more than that 16 and, and a half. And I've experienced it before. When I go on reporting assignments, I bring a backpack, oh, yeah, and I'll put thing. a couple of laptops and an iPad and some notebooks, and, and it hurts. And, and there's those messenger bags, too. Those things, especially if it's weighing heavy, you don't want that either, because that's going to be a one-shoulder kind of bag. It's put all the pressure on one shoulder. Again, make sure you distribute the weight. You what are some, some don'ts in terms of how we wear these? So the biggest thing, again, is you know make sure it sizes well. Make sure you're using both straps. That's the reason it has all the straps on it. If it has a hip belt, make sure you use that. And you don't want that heavy weight. You don't want it dangling. And you don't want to be leaning forward. You want to use good posture with your backpack. If you start getting back pain, if you start getting any kind of tingling in your legs, let your parents know because that means that it's weighing way too much. You need to adjust that. Dr. John, it's always good to have you along. Thanks so much. All right, have fun you. in school. Stay safe. Uh, All right, I'll Jackson. Try. Try. You okay with sticking around? Because we we're going to put you to work. We've got a few more segments for you coming up. Up next, our picture of the week takes us all the way to China. That's right, Lester. A video of a sun bear at a zoo in China has gone viral. And there's a lot of people saying, hold on a sec. Yeah, me included. Our friend Janice Mackey Freyer has details. <laughs> This past week, the bear facts about a question igniting the internet. Is this sun bear at a zoo in China really a bear, or is it a human in disguise? The uproar over this viral video, showing a bear named Angela on hind legs, with impressive posture, lumpy hips, and waving? 
It's very easy to understand when looking at this sun bear standing that it could be a person in a bear suit because it stands so straight and it's waving its hand very human-like in many ways. But the fact is that sun bears, like most bears, well, habitually, they will very commonly stand up on their hind legs like that to get a better view of things and sometimes to get attention. Zoo officials deny there's anything fishy. We caught up with the deputy director. So he... to ask straight up, is the bear real or fake? Uh, I promise it's real, he said. Seeing is believing. People can come and see for themselves. But across social media, the debate will not be tamed, despite a statement released on Angela's behalf, saying, some people thought the way I stand up looks too human, so I will stress again, I'm a sun bear. Bear in mind there is precedent for imposters here, like in 2013, when a Chinese zoo was caught trying to pass off a dog as a lion. Now zoos elsewhere in the world are sharing videos of their sun bears as proof that Angela and her saggy pants are for real. The sun bears have fairly loose skin to begin with because if they get in battles with other bears or they're defending themselves against a predator, when that predator grabs the loose skin, it enables them to turn around and fight back without getting stuck, you see. And with the short hair, those folds were a lot more visible. Experts say Malayan sun bears, with their colored chest fur, are just smaller and slimmer than most other bears. Still, the zoo is in no rush to escape the spotlight. Attendance is up 30% as visitors claw their way to bear witness to all the hype. Okay, a lot of people are, are focusing on the, the flappy skin or the fur. I'm, the, the wave, did that look yeah, like a Yeah, the human? wave and the catch, it looks like a human trying to be a bear. Right. I, I think that's a bear, I mean a human. You, th you think it's a human? I, it has to be. I, I, well, I buy the explanation of, of a scientist who knows. Yeah. I didn't know what a sun bear was. No, I've never heard of going, sun bear going before into this all this, But it looks friendly no matter what. Yeah, it looks <laughs> whether, pretty friendly. Whether it's a human being or a real bear, that's fun. And in case you're wondering, animal experts say sun bears get their name because when they stand up, you'll see an orange crescent shape on their chest. They're also known as honey bears because they love honey. And one more cool fact, Lester, they're really good at climbing trees. Well, I think we've all learned a lot and we'll agree to disagree on whether it's a human or not. All right, Jackson, thanks. Now to our inspiring kids series. A group of young players is channeling their love for the game into a powerful force of goodwill. We get details now from our friend Gabriella Rudy. For these players, baseball isn't just a pastime. It's a lifestyle. Baseball is everything. There's nothing like baseball. I don't think there's any other sport that comes near it. But some kids don't have access to certain equipment, making it hard for them to hit it out of the park. Grant Zane realized this, so he stepped up to the plate. It was like the perfect setup to take this equipment from really nice little leagues that we have like around the South Bay and give it to a community that really needs it. With an assist from family and friends, Grant connected with the Los Angeles Dodgers, who passed the ball to their Dominican Republic training facility. In a grand slam of generosity, the RBI hit charity was born. They collected equipment for over 500 young baseball players, then flew to the Dominican Republic to distribute it. Delivering this equipment wasn't their only mission. Throughout their visit to the Dominican Republic, these players learned more about the culture there, interacted with the local community, and of course, played baseball, just like they do here at home. It was a really eye-opening just to see the kids helping with the donation, you know, uh, giving the baseball clinics, teaching English to our players. A lot of kids are receiving this equipment and benefiting from it. What is the reaction that you see when they get it? The expression of, on their face is, I cannot even describe, you know, because uh, they see them as, as a rock star. What does that kind of image mean to you guys? It's definitely important because we can either take it and use it in a good way or a bad way, and obviously we're using it in a good way. The RBI hit team's efforts clearly hit a home run. They were kind of just really overjoyed at the fact that they finally had like a piece of their own equipment. What was it like for you guys to see that emotional response from the kids that you donated that equipment to? Yeah, it was, it was really amazing. It's really the reason why we go out there is for those moments. These moments proving baseball stretches far beyond home plate. All right, Gabriella, thanks so much. Let's turn to the music world now and an important milestone being marked this month.
50 years ago, hip hop was born. That's right, it all started back in the Bronx, New York on August 11th, 1973, when some teenagers threw a party and on hand with his turntables was DJ Cool Herc. And the general consensus is that it was this DJ who gave birth to hip hop. Well, our pal Jackson Daly had a chance to speak with a hip hop legend about this piece of history. This is great. Yep, that's right, Lester. I had a chance to sit down and interview legendary artist LL Cool J. I asked him about the history of hip hop and how it all started. And get this, he told me he's been rapping since he was just a kid. Check it out. Come on, man. LL Cool J emerged into the rap scene in the 1980s. Some of the rapper's early hits included songs like Going Back to Cali. Since then, the Grammy Award winner has become a pretty big name in the world of music, cementing his place in the history of hip-hop. Thank you for sitting down with me. My pleasure. Great to see you. 50 is a big birthday for hip-hop. So for kids, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how hip-hop came to be? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of it kicked off in the islands, actually, some of the styles and things. But Cool Herc, a DJ named DJ Cool Herc, threw a party in the Bronx around, around 1973. That party, you know, included a lot of different elements of hip hop, primarily the break beats that he was mixing back and forth, like, you know, on the turntables, just taking drum loops and going back and forth. Then, you know, over the years, you know, the dancing came to be. Like, guys, instead of fighting, they would, like, battle it out on the floor, see who yeah, could dance yeah, the best. Yeah. Then you had, like, microphones. You had this DJ equipment, so you had guys that would, you know, talk on the mic, and they would just MC, you know, mic control, and then they started, you know, rhyming and adding poetry and call and response and getting the crowd involved, and one thing led to another, and you end up with DJs spinning unbelievable beats and people doing incredible dances and people coming up with real witty and creative bars, and it just kind of morphed into this big culture that we know today. I mean, it was always fun. It was always huge in the minds of the people that was there from the beginning. You know, me, I became a fan at eight years old. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been rapping since I was eight. So, you know, to, to, to go through that whole process, yeah. you know, and um, just see people, like, they were bragging. They were talking tough. But it wasn't bragging and talking tough like to look down on people. It was bragging and talking tough because I want to go to the next level. And I fell in love with it. And then in the, after that, um, we ended up starting a record company. Well, Russell and Rick started a record company called Def Jam. And I was the first act on that record company, Def Jam. And um, the rest is history. Hip hop became this global thing, all from a little party in the Bronx with you know some of the elements mixed in. God, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm sure you are many people's inspiration, but who, who's your inspiration? I was inspired by, you know, Generation One, because I'm like Generation 1.5 of hip hop, right? Like yeah. I was the first fan. Like I, I witnessed all of it, listened to a lot yeah. of it if I wasn't physically there. But I mean, so it would be people like Cool Herc and the Treacherous Three and the Fearless Four and Cold Crush Brothers and then all of these artists that a lot of people in mainstream world now, you know, uh, are just getting hip to. Because a lot of people are rediscovering now these artists that they hadn't even heard of, but now people are embracing them. So those early guys really inspired me. Shop Rock, Funky Four Plus One More, Fab Five Freddy, you know, it was, it was amazing. LL Cool J is still inspired. He just finished a new album and is getting ready to go on tour. So your tour, first one in a while, right? Yeah, long time. You excited for it? You know, I'm excited for it, I, but more importantly, I just want to give the fans something dynamic. People that want to really have an original hip hop experience, but have it at a high level, where it's dynamic, where it's fun, where it's like, where you could kind of flow with it, even if you don't know the music, where you can have a good time at the party. So like the Roots Band and my DJ Z Trip, yeah, and Jazzy Jeff are all going to be backing the entire tour the entire night. So it's gonna be like one long mixtape. It's gonna be crazy. I love the roots. Yeah. The Seed 2.0 is on my house on replay. My my, that's my favorite song right now. My man. Um, so do you like where hip hop's headed now? Cause it's changed a lot over 50 years. It has, it has. I think that you gotta be the change that you wish to see. Is there room for more? Yes, we know that. Is there room to talk about topics? Yes, there is. But at the same time, you know, that's why I made a new record to just make that contribution. But in terms of hip hop culture, like I feel great about the fact that people are celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Yeah. The fact that like you, you're able to like 
get exposed to some music that you may not have heard. Like, even you just saying The Roots, like, that's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I like the fact that the roots of hip hop and the foundation of hip hop is being recognized and celebrated and people are loving it. And I think that that's a good, that bodes well for the genre long term. That being said, there's room for more creativity, definitely. So you started rapping when you were eight. Yeah. What would you say to kids who want to get into hip hop or just the music business in general at a young age? If you want to get into hip hop, know your craft. It's like anything else. If you were going to get into rock and roll, you would study the history of rock. You would understand the great songs. You would understand the watershed moments. You'd understand who perfected their craft, whether it's the guitar, the drums, etc. And you would learn and emulate and, and just grow into your own thing through those doors. And it's the same with hip hop. You should understand LL Cool J. You, you need to know Run DMC. You need to know the Beastie Boys. You need to know Eminem. You need to know like all of the stuff that came earlier. You gotta know Africa Bambada and the Zulu Nation and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five so that you can enjoy and create something that surpasses a Dirk or, you know, a Lil Baby or a Glorilla or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so you gotta, so in order to go to that next level, you have to really understand creatively where it all started so that you can know the difference. There's a reason why my music sounds one way and the music right now, currently, that you're listening to sounds this way. But you need to understand the connection between those. So you got to be hungry. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to be hungry. You got to always be yeah. hungry. And you got to go get it. You got to be aggressive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all I got for you, really. My man. Thank you. My man. Pleasure. Pleasure. Jackson, that was terrific. What a great interview. You know what I love about him? Big star still touring, and he still has this enthusiasm of the eight-year-old kid. Yeah. He started to say, I mean, he still is an ambassador to the form. Yeah, I mean, he just, he really loves hip-hop, and you can can really see that from whether he's listening to the uh, music he grew up with, or now he mentioned he's listening to J. Cole, Lil Durk, and he's just, you can really tell that he just loves hip-hop, and no matter what form it is, he really loves it. But I have a question for you. Sure. What's on your playlist right now? Ah, what's on my playlist? Uh, you know, I'm a big jazz guy. So yeah. uh, Ron Carter, famous bassist. Um, I have a lot of like Motown stuff. But the interesting thing, you could go back to jazz, Motown stuff. You'll hear some of the same blues, some of the same things you're hearing in hip hop, to, hip -hop today. Because all these musical genres tend to, to mimic yeah, each other. Yeah, they all merge at one point And they can all fuse and go back and just, you know, it's really cool to see how um, the progression has gone. Yeah, so what are you listening to? Oh, God, I mean, everything. I, and I know that kind of might sound like, a, like an overstatement, but I've been listening to Zach Bryan, music from the 80s, I mean, Eminem, like everything. I don't know. I couldn't really tell you one thing I was no, listening to. No, I love that again because I, I kind of do the same. I mean, if, if you went on my, my phone, you'd hear country, you hear blues, yeah, yeah, exactly. you hear folk, you know, all, all, because it's just... Alternative. Alternative, and it, cause it, as I said, they all kind of tell a story, and there's certain truisms in, in musical expression yeah. throughout the genre. So anyway, uh, terrific interview. What was it like talking Thanks. to him? Um, he's intimidating. I mean, he's, really? he's buff. He's a big guy. <laughs> I'm not the biggest. Um, but, you know, he's... Once I was talking to him, he's the nicest, the nicest guy, and, you know, he's just... Again, he just loves hip hop, and I'm excited to uh, listen to the new album. Well, thanks for doing the interview for us. We really appreciate it. It was really terrific. And it's been fun to have you here today. Thank you for Great having to me. to have you on. All right, finally, before we say so long, we want to take a few moments to honor a favorite treat that is being celebrated this week, s'mores. August 10th is National S'mores Day, a popular snack enjoyed by millions, and you don't need to be by a campfire or fire pit to make them. And Jackson, you actually have a go-to s'mores recipe that you like to cook, and you cooked it up for us a couple years ago. Yeah, I did. I'm a big s'mores fan, and the idea I cooked up here is a fun s'mores dip that you can make at home with your family, just like I did with my dad. It's like s'mores nachos. Ooh. You take... Reese's peanut butter cups Reese's. and put them down on a flat iron skillet. We do a lot of s'mores. This is like a yeah, deconstructed we do a lot of version. So. so you put um, them down in a flat iron skillet. Then you top them with marshmallows. Mm. So. Okay, I'm just going to help out. This time we're going to top it. TV. And then what are you going to do with this? You're going to pop, pop this in the and oven? And then you throw it in the oven for about... Uh, 450? Four at 450 for about like four minutes. All right, okay. so we're going to do that. We're going to pop it in the oven and then again, ask a TV. We've got the beauty product. Look at oh. that. 
Okay. And then you break up some graham crackers as like dip, like chips. Yes. And a little whipped cream. So you're gonna just basically dip it. Ooh, it looks good. That was back in 2020 we did this. Yeah, that's... Or you did that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's easy to make because you can uh, see how I did it. You still eating them? Yes, I love s'mores. This is the finished product? Yes, this is, uh, you know, normal s'more. Are we allowed to... Can I eat this? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm still asking for permission. It's my show. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Never go wrong. Well, Jackson, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you had fun. Yeah, always. We, o we always appreciate your stories. Love the LL Cool J interview, and uh, we had a little fun with the s'mores here yes. as well, which I'm going to go back into yes, as soon as I, I say goodbye. But anyway, great job. Good luck in school this year. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long. <laughs>